Welcome to Illuminati Silver, we tell the truth about silver. Today is Monday the 19th of July 2021 and earlier we published our Monday morning update and we placed the link in the description box below. In this video we're looking at a Reuters article published today highlighting the concerns and fears of England's removal of lockdown and mask wearing regulations. This should prove positive for silver prices especially as other countries follow suit, enabling the global economy to pick up and thrive due to the increasing demand for silver for industrial purposes. However, there is an alternative possibility too, which could have the opposite effect. So let's take a look. Okay, interesting article published by Reuters this morning that we wanted to share with you, particularly as today is, is very, very important as far as the United Kingdom is concerned. Headline, England's Freedom Day marred by soaring cases and isolation chaos. And we'll explain as we go through this video the points made and also at the end why we're raising it to your attention because we've all heard enough about COVID, surely but it does have some significance. Prime Minister Boris Johnson's Freedom Day, ending over a year of COVID-19 lockdown restriction in England, was marred on Monday by surging infections, warnings of supermarket shortages, and his own forced isolation or self-isolation. Johnson bet that he can get one of Europe's largest economies firing again because so many people are now vaccinated marks a new chapter in the global response to the coronavirus. If the vaccines prove effective in reducing severe illness and deaths, even while infections reach record levels, Johnson's decision could offer a path out of the worst public health crisis in decades. If not, more lockdowns could loom. So we have the UK population, certainly as far as adults are concerned, superior numbers who've been single vaccinated, more than a majority have been double vaccinated, and the consensus is we cannot afford economically more lockdowns, more funding from central government to keep people home. We need to open the economy. And Johnson is taking the risk by saying we're removing most of the social distancing issues mandates, restrictions, regulations, etc., etc., because we need the economy to boom. The irony, of course, is he's done this on a day where he's had to self-isolate because his own, wait for the irony, Secretary of State for Health has been prescribed as suffering from COVID. So you couldn't really make it up, could you? Let's move on for just a moment. But Johnson's big day was marred by ping-demic chaos as the National Health Service app ordered hundreds of thousands of people to self-isolate, prompting warnings supermarket shelves could soon be emptied. If we don't do it now, we've got to ask ourselves, when will we ever do it? Johnson said just hours after he was forced to abandon a plan to dodge the 10-day quarantine requirement for himself and Finance Minister Rishni Sunak. This is the right moment, but we've got to do it cautiously. We've got to remember that this virus is sadly still out there. In the UK, we've been given, for the majority of the population, it's voluntary, but for certain workers, it's... I'm not sure if it's compulsory, but there are ramifications if you don't have this app. And people who've used this app because they may have come in contact with someone who's had COVID-19, they've been told themselves to self-isolate. Britain has the seventh highest death toll in the world, 128,708, and is forecast to soon have more new infections each day than it did at the height of a second wave of the virus earlier this year. On Sunday, there were 48,161 new cases. 
But outstripping European peers, 87% of Britain's adult population has had one vaccine dose and more than 68% have had two doses, which provides fuller protection. Daily deaths currently at around 40 a day are just a fraction of a peak of above 1,800 seen in January. From midnight, this is what's happening now in England, laws in England requiring masks to be worn in shops and other indoor settings lapsed along with capacity limits in bars and restaurants and rules limiting the number of people who can socialise together. Johnson sets COVID-19 restrictions for England with devolved administrations in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland making their own policy. As businesses across England face a shortage of workers due to the NHS app pinging people and telling them to isolate, supermarkets warned they face strain. It's a major issue across every industry at the moment. Marks & Spencer's CEO Steve Rowe said, Our Covid cases are roughly do doubling every week and the pinging level is about 3 to 1 of Covid cases. So we're seeing that growing exponentially. If there's shortages, we'll have to manage it by changing hours of stores, reducing hours. Where the industry will see the pain is in the supply chain. Because logistics run tight anyway to be efficient, especially when you have almost just-in-time management. So what he's saying is that basically shops can expect shortages, not because the products are not available, but the people will be forced to self-isolate. British society appears split on the restrictions. Some want tough rules to continue, as they fear the virus will keep killing people and overwhelm hospitals. But others have chafed at the most onerous restrictions in peacetime history. Johnson faced an outcry on Sunday when he and Finance Minister Sunak tried to dodge quarantine with a special scheme for senior ministers and civil servants. He will now isolate at his country residence at Chequers after Health Minister Sajid Javid tested positive. As the dawn rose over London, clubbers danced through the night at one of the first rule-free live music events since the pandemic began last year. I've not been allowed to dance for like what seems like forever, said Georgia Pike, 31, at the Oval Space in Hackney, East London. I want to dance, I want to hear live music, I want the vibe of being at a gig, of being around other people. Now that's the end of the article, but this is our take on the situation. We have absolutely no doubt that with social distancing rules, mask mandates removed, that the level of infections will rise and rise exponentially. One thing to some degree that has kept people, inverted commas, safe has to a large extent, whatever you may think of masks, has been the social distancing rules. I do not know anyone who has suffered the flu or a cold in the last 12 months. Whereas normally I will have caught it at least once or twice Members of my family will have caught it, and friends and neighbours will have caught it. So keeping a distance, washing hands, works. Whether masks work or not, it's open for debate. I tend to feel they probably do, providing they are linked with keeping distance. But I cannot prove it, and I'm not going to argue with someone who puts an alternative view across. But I also accept the fact that the economy has to thrive and people have to get their lives back because there has been a vast increase in mental health issues, suicides and deaths through other illnesses because certainly during the peaks, hospitals were not treating patients because of the resources being so far stretched. So we've no doubt that numbers are going to increase. The issue is, of course, will more people die? Or will they suffer other consequences? As we do know, some people who've had COVID have gone deaf in one year. Another person has developed some form of vertigo. And some others have had other respiratory issues. But we cannot live in a risk-free world. Now, what's the point of raising all this? Our concern is that as these numbers increase, if deaths follow, if there is a commensurate increase in deaths because of the undoubted increase in infections that will occur, then policymakers will start the restrictions all over again 
and the economy will suffer. And whilst we are very bullish, gold and silver, and particularly silver, medium to long term, silver should now be shining bright as the economy, the world's economy opens up, more global trade takes place, and the industrial demand increases. But this brightness could be severely affected by further lockdowns. And then to some extent you have the worst of all worlds. You have people with little money and not actually investing in gold and silver because they just don't have the resources to do it in the first place. And secondly, the demand for silver will drop industrially too, thus causing its price to fall to that $20 level that some analysts are predicting. This is why some subjects that appear non-finance related can have a bearing and is something that we should not rule out entirely as a possibility. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Press the bell sign and give us a thumbs up. It's not a great su subject to talk about and it's one which causes a lot of contention. But at the end of the day, we have to face the reality of the situation. Silver price is at risk if further lockdowns begin again. Disclaimer. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.